Today, this OBGYN is covering the five things that I do not want you to put in your vagina. Like, seriously. All right, stay tuned for more. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, and social media educator. And today I'm covering the five things that I want to stay out of your vagina. Before I dive into that, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and turn on the bell so that you never miss an upload. And you know that I love wearing shirts that are somewhat about the topic that I'm talking about today. So what better shirt to wear than my vulva t-shirt? This amazing artistic design was done by Charlotte Wilcox, who is actually the illustrator of my book. And so I'm going to put her contact information in my show notes below because she has so many amazing illustrations that are inclusive, real life, realistic. I just, I just love it. Her artwork just celebrates the diversity of vulvas and the beauty that is our uteruses and our periods and all sorts of things. Very empowering artwork. And if you are in the comment section after watching this or while you're watching this saying, she's getting paid by Big Pharma. Nobody ever wants us to do anything natural. I wanna stop you right there. Okay, first of all, Big Pharma is not sponsoring any of this content nor any of my YouTube content because if they would and they were paying me money, I'd probably be on a tropical beach somewhere. Anyway, also when we write prescriptions for traditional medicines and you go to the pharmacy and you pick them up, we don't get paid for that. The pharmaceutical company makes money, but we don't. And I'm salaried. I make the same salary no matter what I do. So um, also when it comes to like natural things, they never think natural things are good. I do. For example, honey for a cold has been shown to be better than medicines like Robitussin. So me and many other doctors, we recommend honey because there's data behind it. So all these things that I'm mentioning here today, if there was data to support it or if that ever changed, I would let you know. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled programming. Okay, today I'm covering five things that need to stay out of your vagina. And why am I covering them? Because I keep getting asked, is this good? Will this cure yeast infection? Or I just see content out there and it makes me want to <laughs> scream because I have seen what happens when people put these things in their vaginas. Let's just jump right in. The first thing I'm going to mention are douches. And if you have been here long enough, either on my YouTube or my other social media, you know that I hate douches both the people and the products. Douches have been around for a long time and they're terrible. Like, please make them go away. They're like roaches. They just keep trying to get rid of them and they keep showing up. These are products that are marketed to be put into the vagina, either to clean the vagina or to restore your pH balance or whatever other garbage claims that they make, which are all false. And yes, companies like Vagisil and Summer's Eve, they're still around, still making douches. You might think it's something from, you know, the 50s and the 60s, no, no, my friends, go down that little feminine hygiene aisle and you'll see them still there today. And I've got a lot more content about what not to clean your vulva with in this video up here, so you can go ahead and check that out too. But the long and the short of it is that your vagina is a self-cleaning oven. Yes, that sounds weird to say, but it's true. Your vagina doesn't need any help. Nothing should be put inside. And that goes with all of the things that I'm covering here today. The vaginal mucosa, it's delicate. It is not meant to be screwed around with, and it's usually pretty good at maintaining things itself. Sometimes we get infections and we need treatments, but the things I'm mentioning today do not help. So even though douches are marketed to say that they help like clean your vagina, they've got chemicals, they've got fragrances, even water douches are not helpful because the pH of water is different than the pH of the vaginal mucosa. What does this mean? All of these products will then throw off the pH of your vagina, can really disrupt the bacterial balance and can let the bad bacteria take over and the good bacteria end up not being as present. And you can end up with more problems than you started with before you bought the douche. So go ahead, toss them in the garbage. The second thing I want you to keep out of your vagina are yoni pearls. And if you've not heard what a yoni pearl is, it's this little ball of herbs that's in like a little netting. And the purpose is that you insert these into the vagina Leave them in for a couple days and it detoxes your vagina and it detoxes your uterus. I don't know what that means, but the claims that you can see and, and you can find these on Amazon and Etsy and other people who, who market these directly, they claim that it will like help balance your vaginal pH, rid your vagina of bad bacteria, cleanse your uterus, help with endometriosis, infertility, it'll help your sex drive, it'll cure your fibroids. Lots of stuff that is completely false and actually very harmful because if somebody's truly struggling with infertility and they think this yoni pearl is going to help them, it doesn't and now they've delayed their care. So it's really predatory and it's just terrible. Yoni pearls are terrible and you might see people who've posted pictures of what it looks like after they take it out. Yes, people do this um, and you see a lot of like gunk, that's the medical term and like white stuff and whatever and they say, look, see, this was in my uterus and my vagina and it came out. No, that is a bunch of bacteria and pus. That is your body's reacting and saying, oh my gosh, this is inflammatory, this is bad, let's get this out. It's the same thing that happens when you get a cut that's infected 
or you get a cold and you make a bunch of boogers and mucus. That's white blood cells and your body reacting and trying to flush out this garbage. And it's not curative to the vagina. It's irritation, it's really bad. And putting yoni pearls in your vagina and some of the other things that I'm talking about can cause more harm because they can cause little tears in the vagina. They can cause little chemical reactions which can lead to worse problems and can actually increase your risk of infections like toxic shock syndrome, which yes, toxic shock syndrome is natural, but remember, not everything that's natural is good. Okay, let's talk about sea sponges. So this is the third thing I don't want you to put in your vagina. And if you're like, Jen, why would I put a sea sponge in my vagina? Some people use them thinking that it's a natural period product. And you can go on Amazon and Etsy and all these sites and see these natural sea sponges for periods. And it, is what it is. It's a sea sponge taken from the ocean, trimmed, and the thought is because it's absorbent, it's a good thing to stick in your vagina and use as a environmentally friendly period product. Here's the deal though, when they've, when they've actually studied this and looked at it, they found little bits of mold, sand, little pieces of grit, like little rocks, and the bacteria Staph aureus. There is no way that you can medically sanitize a sea sponge like you can a menstrual cup, which I'll get to in a second here. They're really bad for your vagina. And they, quite frankly, they should not be sold or allowed to be marketed because of the harm that they can cause. Now, if you like the idea of an environmentally friendly menstrual product, I totally agree with you. And there are great options that are safe, like menstrual cups, reusable cloth pads, and period underwear. So please use those and keep the sea sponges in the ocean and out of your vag, okay? Okay, the fourth thing to keep out of your vagina, garlic. Now, if this is the first time you've heard of somebody putting garlic in the vagina, cool, scroll on. But if you're somebody who has used garlic with the idea that you're treating a yeast infection, I want you to pay attention here. So it is true that garlic has a history going back to like Greek times, Egyptian times for being able to cure certain ailments. And actually I looked some up and this is really cool here. So in Greece during the Olympics, garlic was fed to the athletes to increase their stamina. That's cool. And in medieval times, um, garlic was recommended as a useful compound for treatment in arthritis, toothaches, chronic coughs, constipation, infections with parasites, snake bites, insect bites, infectious diseases, and gynecologic diseases. I think in the medieval times, they were like, we don't know what the hell to do. Here, have some garlic. And it's true that there has been some antibacterial properties attributed to garlic due to one of the compounds, especially called allicin, not the person, but but the, the compound. Oh, and there are studies that show that it can help with certain infections. Now, when it comes to putting garlic in the vagina, people use it as a way to treat yeast. And I don't want you to do this because the studies that have compared garlic treatment to our traditional treatments are very tiny and they don't have any long follow-up and there's no placebo group. The bottom line is that these were actually really bad studies. And just because something works in a lab where we've got more data doesn't mean that it's gonna work in your vagina. So until we have more evidence, it's not a great idea. Garlic like grows in the ground. So you're putting other stuff up in there too. It can also cause vaginal irritation. And when you're using garlic and not traditional treatments, you're delaying care. So garlic is for pesto, not for vaginas, okay? And the final thing, I don't want you to put yogurt in your vagina. So there's some ideas out there that putting yogurt in your vagina, either directly or like putting it in a little suppository or dipping a tampon in it, can help you treat a yeast infection. Here's the problem, there's no data to support this. And the studies that were done that said that it worked were once again, terrible studies. Now don't get mad at me for that, but don't you think we shouldn't lower the bar for our vaginal health and instead demand better studies? Also, a lot of the yogurt that people are using is not the right strain of lactobacillus. And the whole idea behind using yogurt to cure a yeast infection is that it'll help with the balance of the good bacteria, which will help fight the yeast. We're just not there yet with data. Again, if that changes, I'll let you know. So to wrap up the five things to keep out of your vagina, douches, yoni pearls, garlic, menstrual sea sponges, and yogurt. Lots of these things are really delicious in dishes. Other things are really cool in the ocean. And douches, well, they should just be thrown in the garbage and set on fire. But I wanna hear questions, comments, thoughts below. If you're interested in the evidence and the things that I cite, go ahead and check out my references and resources in my show notes. And like I said, go check out Charlotte Wilcox's amazing art. Her information is, my, is in my show notes. And if you're not following me on other social media, go ahead and follow me at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln on TikTok, Instagram. And you know what? Keep all those yucky things out of your vagina and come see us if you have problems. We wanna help. All right, friends, see you later.